Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. Um, this reading vlog I'm actually pretty excited about because the books I'm reading are going to be like full throttle. I'm calling this week plots, no thoughts. <laughs> I basically just want to like lie low, play a lot of cozy games and read two books I think that are going to blow me away. So without further ado, let's chat about my TBR. The two books that are on my TBR for this video is first Chibola Burn by James S.A. Corey. I have been craving to get back into the Expanse world. This is book four to this space opera series. I also got the audiobook because I've heard good things about the narrator and I thought it'd be a good companion to playing some fun, mindless um, video games. And I've also just been curious about the audiobook, so I wanted to test that out. And then I also want to start Lock Lens tonight by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the third and final book to one of my favorite fantasy trilogies that I've just been dying to get to and wrap up before the end of the year. Both these books are long. I think this is like 1200 pages or something. So we'll see how far I get. But I'm hoping because the plot are just so plot forward that I won't want to put them down. Context, it's currently like Tuesday evening. I'm starting this vlog a bit later. Um, somehow this week has already gotten away from me, but that is fine. <laughs> We are going to get a lot of good reading in. I'm actually gonna do some reading right now. I'm gonna put my audiobook on and play some of my new game. It's called Moonlighter. I've been really enjoying it. And then I'm gonna cook dinner. It's gonna be spectacular. So anyway, welcome to the start of this vlog. It's time for plots, no thoughts. I don't even know if that's catchy because my brain is so low functioning right now. I can't even tell you if that's even clever or not. But anyway, I'm excited to read. If anyone was curious what being a homeowner is like, well, anyway, Clay is <laughs> like tilling the ground in jeans, no less, because he's he wants to test this grass. He has a whole backyard project he's like currently uh, testing out right now. So wish those seedlings luck for Clay's sake. Matilda pensively looking out the window thinking about life and all of its mysteries. Vlogging because I have been tick talking, but basically I'm making a butternut squash pasta for dinner tonight, which I'm also gonna make again tomorrow because I had a lot of frozen butternut squash. I basically just roasted it with some garlic and I made this puree and I'm now gonna turn that into a sauce, some sage, some gouda, some Parmesan. Oh, and some crispy prosciutto. Should be delicious. All right, here's the pasta. I can confirm that this is absolutely delicious. 10 out of 10. For execution, this is not my recipe. It's half-baked harvest. You can press play. An obvious way to pass the evening, right, Matilda? Belay? Belay. Belay. Friends, I am in bed. I have decided to go to bed early to actually start reading early. Today is one of those days where I feel like I could never get my brain to focus on any one activity. So I ended up just like, I don't know, spending way too much time on my phone and just never really fully investing myself in a single activity. So with that in mind, I decided to just <laughs> no more TV, no more phone, let's go read. I've also decided I wanna continue reading uh, Cybola Burn by James S.A. Corey. I did start it, I listened to the audiobook a bit while I was playing some Moonlighter, which was a delightful um, little part of my evening. I'm really liking that game. Um, and the audiobook is good, um, but I feel like I need to read more physically before I can switch over to the audiobook. Like I feel like I need to be like rooted with all these new characters before I have an audiobook narrator because I feel like my mind wanders and then I get confused. Um, but I also know that this book is gonna start like fast because all of his books tend to, which just make them so entertaining and I think a perfect thing to gain my attention span back. So that is the plan tonight, continue getting more of this read. I think I'm on page like 50 or something at the moment. So I'm gonna try to get over the 100 page mark before I inevitably fall asleep. Uh, but that's that and I'll give you guys a reading update in the morning. And then I also plan to start Locklands tomorrow. So cheers. Good morning, everyone. Time for some coffee. You'd think I'd ever fix the clock time on this, but I don't know if I ever will. But uh, I'm going to drink some coffee, get some reading in before. Today is like a big computer day, so we'll hunger down 
after we get some reading done. Hi friends. So I wanted to pop in and do my first reading update because I have read 200 pages of Cybola Burn and oh my gosh, I think this has to be one of the fastest paced books in the Expanse series so far only because like the tension that James S.A. Corey has created immediately and like oh it's very hard to put down and it also makes me want to scream and I also just feel like it's another great example of how this series is so good because every book kind of has a new situation um, that has like the impacts of previous books on them but it's not like the plot has to be constantly going to this crazy new place. It's more like the author's exploring different like intense plot lines that match within this sci-fi world, if that makes sense, which makes them all entertaining and also like different from one another while having consistencies throughout them at the same time. This particular book, and I guess like the central theme so far for the plot that's been introduced to us is very much like Lord of the Flies vibe like we're following this isolated colony and we basically have a group of people who have arrived here first and have been living here for over a year and are you know making this new place their home and then we also have organizations and governments that have since arrived and they're trying to set the precedent for like what this new place and this new organization mean but through the distance of where this colony is there's lots of isolation and like communication from more powerful people is going to take a long time so everyone's actually acting with a lot of autonomy and the people that are there are the ones making the decisions and quickly there's a extreme divide basically the people that have come through this like research and government group and then the original colonist and you see the escalation of community violence. You also see the escalation of like lines being drawn and where people are willing to go to protect an area when they decide that they are the ones that are supposed to be able to access it. You also see the prejudice and racism that exists specifically kind of in this world, which has always been kind of a part of the book, especially um, as there's a lot of tensions between belters, which are these people who are from space stations further away from kind of the main inner planets. They've always been generally mistreated by the inner planets. They also look a little bit different. And you see the prejudice and racism of that playing out in this kind of micro situation that is so intense it feels like a standoff and the simmer turning to a boil and these spikes of tension it's like very very scary and it also though really represents like how this entire mess can occur and like this type of this type of stuff has occurred in our own history like the paranoia the distrust the othering of either side and like the dehumanization of other of either side and like that is really kind of like this book um and that's like the primary plot but then again because this is the fourth book to a series there's like larger things also happening in the background and that's why i think this series works so well is that every book has its own like primary plot but they're still growing that like sci-fi world in the background and the consequences of the previous books are still showing themselves off. Um, but it just makes the world like continually be fresh. And then, as I said before, this series to usually introduces us like majority new characters, I would say 75% of the books, at least that I've read so far, are always new characters, but there is like one constant holdover and that is Holden, who is a ship captain and his crew. And he's always just everywhere. This man is all over the place and he is in this book. Again, most of the characters are new to us and they exist on both sides of this conflict. Um, good, bad, evil, ugly, if you know what I mean. We have points of views of some of the colonists. We have points of views of some of the scientists who have come to this planet. And we have points of views of people who are part of the security force and like oh like 200 pages in like my heart has been racing the entire time like it is so scary because like this type of situation is like hum it's like i guess humankind at its worst in some ways and it's just like i don't know how it's going to pan out um and it's interesting too like i can share more easily the plot of this book without talking about the larger sci-fi stuff happening in the background because I won't do that because that's spoilers. But again, because each plot is so fresh, it's really easy to discuss on camera because they're just kind of like almost unique. But there's again, 
threads that kind of connect them all together and it's a slow build that works so well but I love these books I love where they've all gone so far I'm really excited to start the show I'm reaching the point where I feel like I can begin the show because I am on book four but I have flown through this I feel like I'm going to read it really really fast because this one especially is like just so intense for me um definitely a strong start for sure probably one of the strongest starts of all four books that I have encountered so far so good start but I've got other stuff I gotta do so we're gonna do that now pre-lunch snack I opened that but no one talks enough about how good these are it's like nothing about them has changed since I was like five and they're so dang good lunch is served we love an egg salad sandy in this house. Alrighty friends, I'm knocking out Clay's coffee cup scram because I'm gonna have a cup of joe. I also need the baking soda, this coffee cup, it's so stained. Um, but I'm also gonna treat myself to an episode of The Real Housewives of New York. I'm rewatching season eight right now. Impeccable stuff. So I'm gonna go drink this, listen to women scream about this man named Harry, and then I'm gonna get back to it and then also get more reading in. It is the end of the work day, and I was gonna start Locklands, but truth be told, where'd I put it? I'm so into, oh, there it is. I'm so into uh, Cybola Burn that I'm gonna listen to some of the audiobook and play Moonlighter. It's so good. Like this book has hooked me right away. Like I haven't felt so. I've been reading some really incredible literary fiction stories and I've read a really recently a really good fantasy story, but this is like so plot forward. It's so hard to put down and it just feels very addicting, you know, and I love that feeling. So I'm going to listen to some of the audiobook, play Moonlighter, and I'm going to start Lachlan's tonight um, because I want to get ahead and then tomorrow i should have a lot more time to read just how i kind of organize my work schedule for the week so we'll see but just wanted to give you an update we're having pasta tonight we're gonna finish lord of the rings um fellowship of the ring because we started the extended edition a few days ago um and it's like three hours and 50 minutes so <laughs> we got halfway through we're gonna finish that tonight uh, I always love rewatching Lord of the Rings around holiday season. And now that it's officially November, I'm like gearing up towards Christmas. Like I need to take down all this fall decor and I'm excited. So it should be a fun, cozy night. I'm looking forward to it. Guys, I'm obsessed with this game, Moonlighter. It's basically like a dungeon crawler. So you go through dungeons, you kill monsters, you collect items, and then you sell them in your little shop. And then you use that money to buy other items. But it's so fun because you set the prices so you're also trying to like understand the economy of this town you expand the town you expand your shop it's just it's so fun it's so fun so far and it's like engaging enough to keep me like really focused and addicted to it but it's also not very hard and i am in love with it and i also listened to chapter 24 of i will burn and i did this for like two hours on accident hi friends it is dinner time. I'm making the same delicious pasta as yesterday. And the cool thing about this pasta is that I already did like a bulk of the work yesterday, which was making this like um, squash puree base, which is just like roasted. I can't think of what the squash is called, but a squash. <laughs> uh, but now I just need to like prep the other stuffs to make this into a sauce and boil some noodles. And then that's basically it. So I got to chop up and cut up a few things, and then we're good to go. Fresh herbs and 
butter. A little bit of pasta water, add it in the cheese. And there we go. We got a sauce. D dish. And dinner is done. Lord of the Rings. Well, we're not done quite yet. We still have about an hour left, but we should be able to finish um, soon, if not tomorrow. But now I'm finally going to start Lachlan's by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the third book to one of my favorite fantasy series. And I also wanted to say I've read to page 250 today of Chibora Burns by James S.A. Corey, which is so good. I also took some time to listen to the audiobook, which I'm liking. Um, I think the narrator does a pretty good job. There's so many characters, so many names. And I feel like for me personally, when I have a lot of names to keep track, it's harder for me to do it in audiobook form. Um, but I feel like he does a good job like distinguishing between the different points of view. So that's really, really helpful. Um, and the plot itself reads, like the book reads fast, so it's easy to consume via audio. I was just nervous I would get lost in the sauce with all the names, but so far, not so bad. But this clip is really just to tell everyone I'm starting Lachlan's and I'm really excited about it. So I'm gonna do it, fall asleep, and then I'll see y'all in the morning. Good morning, it is a rainy day. I'm wearing my new favorite fleece and I'm gonna sit down and do more reading because I only read like 30 pages of my book before I fell asleep. I also think I need to read a recap but we'll see. Hi friends let's sit down and chat Lachlan. So I've read 100 pages of this book obviously this is the third book in a series I will not give any spoilers for the series at all. Um cool thing about this book and honestly now that I'm remembering like how the first and second one went. I shouldn't be surprised, but this book immediately threw me into the action. Like this series and the writing by Robert Jackson Bennett for me is just so compelling. I feel like each chapter just seamlessly like bleeds from one to another and you find yourself just like flipping the pages. It's just very high octane and each book also really raises the stakes um, plot wise. So every book is super exciting, but then like you keep reaching this new point and you're like, whoa, where are we going to go to next? Whoa, where are we going to go to next? Um, and I just find the writing like so, so compelling and right out of the gate, this book is just like throwing us into the action. Interesting too, there's a time skip, which again was used also in Shorefall, which I also think is very, very effective because it allows like the whoa plot twist of the end of like each book that you're reading to uh, kind of develop. And then the author, Robert Jackson Bennett, can kind of like set the table in a way where we're not at the beginning of whatever was revealed, but instead he's allowed it to marinate a bit, which I think works really well from a fantasy pacing point of view. So if you're not familiar, this series, uh, the first one is called Foundry Side, and we're introduced to this world that is kind of like Venetian merchant house politics world. Basically, there are these really powerful merchant houses that control not just the economy, but also like the land. Where Sansi, our main character, lives, 80% of the land is controlled by these merchant groups. Um, they're like mini walled cities inside of a city. The rest of the land is called Foundryside and it's completely lawless. Our main character Sansia is a thief and she's a very good one. And at the beginning of book one, she's hired to steal an ancient artifact, which she does. And this ancient artifact is like a talking key, um, who is a fantastic character, hilarious. And they actually start to like form a bit of a relationship. But in stealing this key, it kind of turns the politics of the merchant houses upside down um, because a lot of the merchant house's wealth and power is tied to the magic system. And the magic system of the series is by far and away the coolest part. It's so unique and original. And again, the author really builds it. Um, like the lore and our understanding and our character's understanding of how it works, like with every book, it grows and grows and it's amazing. But I kind of describe the magic system as like magical coding. It's very like sciency. It's very like technical. Basically, um, there are individuals called Scriveners who can, who, if you understand the language of a material, you can basically break in and then create a code to rewrite how that material interacts with the world. You can make water run more quickly. You can make a wall stronger. There are definitely rules on how these laws can be applied. And the author goes into detail about how all that works. And you basically can't defy like laws of gravity. Generally, it all kind of makes sense as you're reading it. But Sansia particularly is a really good Scrivener because she can actually see 
the language of these materials. So her ability to interact with them happens much more quickly and she can do it on a much more personal basis, which is what also, which is also why she's such a good thief. This magic is just amazing. And like understanding how it works and how the merchant houses basically use scribing to make a lot of money because they're making, you know, scribed objects, which can do and interact uh, with the environment in certain ways. And they also have like, teams of scientists and scriveners like trying to find new language uh breakers and stuff and then obviously when more people try to get involved in their business they don't like it <laughs> a large part of the first part of the series is definitely like a heist situation the first book is a heist even the second book is a heist and it really follows like a ragtag group of individuals but again like the plot really escalates and it's fascinating and that's kind of where we're at in book three i don't really want to say much but uh i will say i was like a little disoriented initially thrown into this book uh but once i like kind of remembered all the players and the stakes i immediately just fell into this narrative. I love Robert Jackson Bennett's writing. I feel like his magic is interesting. His worlds are interesting. Like the themes are interesting, but his characters are also amazing. Like every aspect for me works well because I feel like I have to be like emotionally connected to my characters to really truly care about what's going on. And he has the ability to write good characters and good plot, which is just chef's kiss. Um, so far, so good. I mean, really, I can't have much complaints and because of the time skip of this third book i'm really just trying to get my bearings and figure out where who what and why um and the first 100 pages have really flown by as i've been trying to figure that out um but yeah i'm excited to continue to read this i love this series and every page i read i'm reminded as to why and i really feel like i'm gonna fly through this too definitely picked up two very very intense and like fast reads for this vlog, which is definitely what I need. So I for sure plan to read more later. I'm about to make lunch and I have a lot of meetings this afternoon, so I'm not really sure when I'm gonna be able to sneak reading in, but it will happen. Hi friends, I'm so sorry for the lack of check-ins. Um, I've worked right up to the clock today. It's like almost seven, but Clay and I are going to the movies, which I'm really excited about. It's a movie Clay picked out. It's our date night tonight, so we're about to head out. I am wearing this, which I have been wearing all day. Um, and then when we get home, I'm gonna read more Lachlan's because I'm actually like super invested in this book. So pumped, but that is the plan. Gonna eat some chicken fingers, gonna eat some popcorn. <laughs> it's already Christmas in Mueller. We've arrived at the movie theater. I need to get our Christmas de decorations up, Clay. <laughs> We are at the movie. Hello. Back home, we ended up seeing um, the Banshees of Iverness, I think it's called. Um, it's like an Irish dark comedy. Um, and it was good. I feel like it's one of those movies, or anyway, I felt like I was absorbing it. And I was like, there are definitely some themes like going over my head. And also the movie I left, I was like, I feel like I need to write an essay about this, and, like read some articles about it. But I would recommend it. Uh, it's definitely an unusual movie. Um, and definitely a movie that doesn't have like a clear climax almost. Well, like a wrap up, an ending. Um, it's very, everything's very vague. But from there, I'm gonna pick up Lachlan's, which I hope is not vague. Um, as I've said, I've read 100 pages of this and I want to read as much as I can before I go to sleep. And then obviously tomorrow we will pick up our reading game. I have read 350 pages so far for this vlog. So let's hope I can pass the 500 page mark tomorrow. So that there is the plan. Good morning, the coffee is brewing. Sit and read more Foundry Side. It's also a gloomy day outside. A hot day, but a gloomy day at least. Hello, good morning so i've read well not good morning it is almost lunchtime but i'm just doing a reading update for the day um i've read 150 pages of lachlan's oh clay's taking down the halloween decor sad so i've read 150 pages of lachlan's and i'm liking this book um i still have like so much left to encounter because i feel like because of the time skip a lot of things have been reset there's been a lot of changes in this world, um, which is honestly 
been interesting to encounter. I feel like it allows us to kind of have can, more world building and then like a nice buildup of plot. Um, while still, there's still a lot of action though, but I still feel like I'm trying to like get my bearings in this new, very changed world. But everything also feels very logical because the magic and the politics, like everything has really grown on itself. Um, but there's still gonna be like new iterations of things. And I think just, I'm constantly reminded that the strength of this book is the characters and also the magic and the magic technology element because it's just really, really, really fascinating. And it's developed in such a way that there's like all of these new concepts that I could have never saw coming in book one um, being present. And it works really well. Like there's just so many clever, evolutions of this plot and magic that I'm experiencing this and it's great. Um, there's also already so many emotional stakes. I've like already like teared up while reading this and it's just been really engrossing so far and I'm probably in the slowest part of the book which is the first part. Um, I definitely plan to read more of this this afternoon but I have quite a bit of work I need to get done but nevertheless that's where I'm at right now. I've also officially read 400 pages so far for this vlog. Both books have just been absolutely non-stop, so entertaining. Um, and I can't wait to finish both of them, which is such a great feeling, just like plot, 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 which is what I wanted. I just wanted to be punched in the face by some plot. Um, but now I'm gonna make a lunch. So let's go transition to that. All right, so lunch is a really easy salad. It's just like a spinach arugula salad, which I put some chopped pecans, cranberry, dried cranberries, and a chopped up apple. I top it with goat cheese and then I just made a classic um, Dijon vinaigrette that I already made like a few days ago so I need to add a bit more oil to this um, but it should be super tasty. Oh and quinoa to make it a bit more filling so I'm just gonna put all this together now. Should be good. And uh, bon appetit. I just chopped this salad, which has apple, <laughs> apples, pecans, um, and dried cranberries with some goat cheese. Mix it up with the dressing, delish. Ooh, it's that time of year. The process is beginning. I'm not decorating quite yet. That'll probably be in the next vlog, if I'm being honest. But I am taking down all the fall decor, Matilda. It's time to pack it up. Pumpkins are gone, candy canes are coming out. All right, friends, gonna take a seat and get more of Lock Lens Red. You ready, Millie? We're gonna get to page 300, that is the goal. Hi guys, and welcome to the end of the vlog a few days later. So let's go ahead and wrap up everything I was able to read over the course of this vlog. So, good news, I was able to read a total of 300 pages of Locklands, which does mean I hit over the 550 page mark for this vlog. I am filming this video a few days later and I have since finished Locklands, so I'll try to give like comprehensive final thoughts and feelings, so. I really enjoyed this book. I think in general, writing a ending for a fantasy trilogy can be so difficult. You're growing the stakes, you're growing the stakes, you're growing the stakes, and can you make something that makes sense and is satisfying and also like emotionally impactful? And I actually feel like Robert Jackson Bennett did a really good job here. I think again throughout the series because he has time skips this is also something he did within another series of his that I love so much that I think it just allows for the development of stakes and he can kind of progress things forward and we can kind of start in like a new place within the overall situation which I think worked well. I feel like he had a very human and like emotional element to what was a huge large scale like action heavy book like this was a book that was heavy from beginning to end i think the only thing i would say about this one in comparison to the first two books is that it kind of lacked some of the levity of previous installments this sort of like it kept the like unlikely crew of people up against like an impossible like unbalanced force like that was there but it didn't have as much humor as previous installments and to be fair, this was a very like life or death type of situation. So maybe there wasn't room for humor. Uh, that being said though, I feel like it was really successful, emotional and wrapped things up 
very well. Like I was, there really reached a point in this book where I was like hooked and could not put it down. The middle had a few pacing issues, but kind of once we like started walking into the finale element of this book, it was really well done. Um, and I just think like thinking back where we started in the series and how it continued to evolve to the third book, I think was just really impressive and just reminds me like how much I love Robert Jackson Bennett's writing. Um, because he delivers, like not just with the first book, not with just the second book, but with the third book as well, which is always, it can be hard. Um, and then obviously I also read 250 pages of Cybola Burns. I am so into this. Definitely gonna be starting the TV show soon. And I'm gonna hopefully read more of this series pretty quickly too, because I'm just like having a blast. Like I say I'm having a blast, like this, this isn't really intense and like very anxiety inducing, because it is also that. But needless to say, my plot-centric reading vlog was quite the success. I got a good of the way through to very long books, so I'm very happy with that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!